Okay, I am writing completely. Okay. P injunction diode. Okay, this is very very important because suppose if you take transistors, okay, transistors are solar cells, solar cells are LEDs, LEDs, and uh, many electronic devices we are using are photo detectors, photo detectors and sensors okay sensors this all you know you are using this all devices for this all devices main fundamental is pn junction diode every device should having pn junction okay how this pn junction will work we will see this is very very important all devices will work based on pn junction only okay if you understand properly this pn junction only one uh, one uh, you just understand pn junction then you can easily understand these devices, how this will work. Okay, we have solar cells, LEDs, uh, photo detector sensors in next units. Third unit, we have this all topic. So, and the transistors we don't have. So, this you can easily understand once you understand the PN junction diode. Okay, that is very, very important. Okay, we will discuss uh, step by step. Okay, we have time also. So, PN junction means Suppose you have a P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor. If you bring it close together or if you join two semiconductor, it will form a junction. This junction we are calling a PN junction. Okay, that's it. Okay, so here we know we'll see the diagram and we will understand. Okay, just you understand diagram very easy. Suppose this is P-type semiconductor here we are taking. So this is P-type semiconductor and here we are taking N-type semiconductor. P and N type semiconductor. So where is the Fermi level for P type semiconductor? Where it will lies near to the valence band and conduction band. Valence conduction band. near to the valence band. Very good. OK, this is the near to the valence band. Similarly, for uh, N type semiconductor. Conduction band. Yeah, nice. OK, this is towards the conduction band. This is the highest, lowest energy level is sorry EC and this highest energy level EV and this is the Fermi level for P side or just you write, write EC. Uh, this one also ES and this EF and here EV. Okay. So here it is Fermi level is close to the valence band means in this semiconductor holes are the higher concentration. So if entire semiconductor Fermi level is close to the conduction band means in this semiconductor, electrons are the higher. Electrons are the higher. Density of electrons are higher compared to density of holes. So always you remember in valence band means we will have free holes. Free holes are you can say bound electrons. Bound electrons. Bound electrons. So conduction band means always only free electrons. This you remember. Okay. Conduction band means always free electron. Valence band means free electrons will be there and bound electrons also there. Okay, bound electrons to the nucleus. These electrons are some of the electrons are bound to the nucleus. That is we are calling bound electrons. Okay, so here so we have different semiconductor. So we will bring together and actually there is a process. Okay, for uh, making PN junction there is a process. Okay, first we will deposit some P type layer here. Okay, P type layer. After that, we will deposit N type layer. Okay, this is N and P type layer. Otherwise, this is also you can how uh, we know already P type how will uh, fa uh, fabricate or you can how you will deposit. This is suppose a some simply intrinsic semiconductor. Here we will add or here we will diffuse diffuse dopant atoms. Suppose you want P, we will add aluminium atoms. Suppose this is silicon wafer. Suppose this is intrinsic silicon wafer will heat this wafer like a thousand about thousand degrees centigrade. Will heat this wafer. It will come a molten form. In the molten form, you will add aluminium dopant atoms. Then it will become a p-type semiconductor. Suppose you want n-type semiconductor, we will take a crystalline silicon wafer, silicon wafer or silicon material. We will heat this one like 1000 or 2000 uh, degrees centigrade, very high temperature. This will take actually in a crucible, some crucible we will take. We will take, uh, we will put a silicon wafer here or silicon material and we will heat up this material. 
like a 2000 around 2000 degree centigrade then this silicon solid silicon comes into molten form okay after that we will add here some aluminum or third group elements aluminum or boron whatever you can say okay. okay third group atoms will be add and this will become a p type semiconductor okay if we add fifth group elements that is phosphorus or something else it will become a n type semiconductor first we will take a pure silicon material and it will heat up like 2000 degree centigrade we will heat that material and we will add dopant atoms okay either third group or fifth group then we will get a p type or n type semiconductor that is the process of simply uh, making p type and n type semiconductor once you make here suppose if you take this much of pure silicon or crystalline intrinsic silicon first what we will do from this side they will add phosphorus atoms then up to they will diffuse up to some part so so this become a n type semiconductor okay from down side we'll add aluminum atoms diffuse into the back side so this will become a p type semiconductor now it will become a pn junction diode okay what we'll do just we'll take a n type semiconductor or uh, just take a pure semiconductor one side we'll diffuse we'll diffuse phosphorus atoms or fifth group atoms fifth group you take you can take fifth group or down side we will add third group atoms or we will diffuse mainly diffuse then after diffusing one side it will be n type one side will be p type so so how the pure silicon will form anybody knows how we will get the complete pure silicon why actually before uh, this one why silicon uh, many semiconductors are there why silicon is uh, mostly famous and everywhere we are using silicon material what is the importance what is the uh, significance of this silicon anybody why we are uh, most of the devices we are using silicon only right so what is the importance of this silicon why we are using this silicon what is the specialty of this uh, silicon silicon material we have many semiconductors right so why only we are using many devices like led solar cells or transistors mostly we are using silicon only what is the specialty of this silicon anybody because it has uh, glass know, property it has glass property easily we can make uh, glasses glasses glass property yeah, you are saying yes sir glass uh, uh, it's not exactly uh, okay thank you okay so because uh, silicon we can easily get how silicon means suppose uh, sio2 or sio what is uh, what we are seeing our earth sand if you take sand that is sio right this uh, chemical formula what is the chemical formula sio isn't it sand yes, sir. Yeah. just sand yeah. or whatever we have stay living on earth that is sand just sand that is silicon only it is silicon only just they will take a sand okay from this sand they will purify it. okay they will purify it. they will extract the silicon okay they will extract the silicon that's why this silicon is yes, mostly sir. available available and available or you can say abundant or you can say same meaning abundant abundant means it is mostly available element on the earth it is mostly available element in the on the earth okay and also stability yes, second second property is very important property stability very high stability is there suppose if you make device it is not stable after two, uh, one two days it will damage then no use of uh, making devices right so stability also very high easily available stability also very high and it is a band gap also very less like 1.1 electron volts that means using this uh, band gap we can absorb lots of uh, energy spectrum that is 300 nanometer to up to like 1000 nanometer we can utilize the spectrum mostly this is visible spectrum most of the visible spectrum we can utilize 
in the semiconductor in silicon semiconductor then we can get some output result okay that's why this silicon is mostly important material and uh, mostly used for devices fabrication okay it is uh, easily available and uh, it is most uh, it is easily available and it can we have uh, lots of large quantity of silicon okay whatever we have on earth that is completely we can use this sand and we can uh, purify and we can extract the silicon okay that is easy and also stability also high stability also high but uh, processing little bit costly compared to uh, uh, suppose you want to extract the silicon completely silicon like wafers you have seen uh, solar cells right that is like a wafer okay suppose you want to extract that silicon you need some uh, manufacturing processing you require that is little bit costly but other than it is a uh, very uh, easy and so raw material is very cheap and easily available stability is high using this material we can utilize last of the visible spectrum that is why most of the silicon industry is developed that means silicon is using in most of the devices okay that's why okay that is the other thing now we will see how this is so we know for p type semiconductor this is the p type semiconductor so we are writing p type this is conduction band and valence band so fermi level is near to the valence band this is ef okay ef this is ec and this is ev okay here also we are taking another semiconductor that is n type semiconductor here this is ec and same conduction band and valence band so here fermi level is close to the conduction band okay now we will bring it to the gather what will happen we'll see okay this is very important okay suppose once you bring there is a interface there is a interface this one so here is the p type semiconductor and here is the n type semiconductor p and n okay just i am writing this is not band diagram just uh, 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 when we uh, draw the energy level diagram also you will clearly understand so this is p type semiconductor this is n type semiconductor we know in p type semiconductor which are majority carriers what are the majority carriers holes 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 yeah very good so holes are the majority carriers that means this density of holes is higher than the density of electrons density of holes is higher than the density of electron and in n type semiconductor we know electrons are the higher concentration density of electrons is higher than the density of holes so electrons are the majority carriers in n type semiconductor right n type semiconductor now we bring it together see here uh, thing is we are not connecting any external bias here we are not connecting any external bias just we add it together so what happens now so here holes are the majority carrier so if you take p type semiconductor here hole concentration is higher than the electron concentration or you can write e also in n type semiconductor electron concentration higher than the hole concentration what happens here here suppose electrons are higher concentration what happens it will diffuse into the p type semiconductor because concentration is high suppose here we have one beaker we have another beaker here water level is high here water level is low just we connected these two beakers so water will flow from high be first beaker to second beaker right in first beaker water is high so in second beaker water is less so it will easily move to the second beaker without any external force without any external force that is diffusion here also in n type semiconductor density of electrons are electrons higher compared to holes so the, these electrons will diffuse towards the p type semiconductor so similarly in p type semiconductor also holes are the majority carriers holes are the majority carriers are density of holes higher than the density of electrons there is a electrons also but very very less compared to holes that electrons are very very less so this will also diffuse towards the n type semiconductor okay because of charge carrier gradient because of the density higher density from electrons will diffuse from n type to p type and holes will diffuse from p type to n type so while diffusing these electrons are lasting this semiconductor that means here is a positive charge density positive charge density or you can say 
it is leave you see a positive charge and it will go here once a hole is leaving this place means it will leave a negative charge negative charge so like that it is a some region is forming here okay once electrons are leaving to uh, n region to p region here positive region is forming electrons leaving that means negative charge is going off so that means that uh, ions getting positive charge similarly here also p side holes are leaving to the holes are leaving that means positive charge losing positive charge that is that means they are getting some ions are getting negative charge this region what we are calling space charge region okay this whatever region is forming this region we are calling space charge region what is the space charge region okay so so here n type silicon means what here here phosphorus atoms are there and silicon atoms are there right so this whatever positive electrons are leaving means this ions phosphorus ions getting a positive charge positive charge here positive charge is immobile whatever this is due to this positive charge is because here what is that here phosphorus ions are this are phosphorus ions phosphorus atoms are ionized you can say ionized so this phosphorus atom leave the one electron and get ionized so that is uh, that got a positive charge similarly similarly if you take p type semiconductor if you take p type semiconductor and aluminum and silicon aluminum and silicon or you can write third group and fourth group also you can write okay for example we are taking like this so this aluminum is receiving electrons from this electron where we are getting from n type semiconductor we are getting some electrons and this aluminum receiving electron that means this aluminum atoms are ionizing that means this aluminum atoms getting negative charge aluminum atoms getting negative charge this negative charge is due to ionized acceptor atoms this negative charge is due to ionized acceptor atom this positive charge due to ionized 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 this phosphorus donor atoms okay this is due to donor atom and this is due to acceptor atom okay this charge density is immobile okay here free holes are free. this holes holes you can take and electrons these are free free means this can move any direction okay this can move freely with throughout semiconductor but this whatever induced charge in the space charge region induced charge in the near the interface or you can say this is the interface okay near the interface whatever induced charge positive charge and negative charge that is immobile immobile means that is not movable this uh, this ions whatever aluminum ions and these are positive uh, phosphorus plus ions these are immobile immobile means these are fixed in a crystal fixed in a crystal or in a lattice you can say these ionized atoms are fixed or fixed or fixed in a crystal or lattice you can say lattice also you can say lattice are crystal these are fixed that's why this cannot move only free electrons and uh, holes and electrons only freely move within the semiconductor okay so here positive charge here positive and negative charge is forming this region we are calling a space charge region because of this charge density because of this negative and positive charge density there is a internal electric field isn't it internal electric field is forming okay if it is there is a positive and negative charge there is a electric field right because of this electric field there is a built in potential built in potential vbi built in potential means because of this charge density because of negative and positive charge density these are immobile these are not movable because of this there is a internal electric field and also because of this positive and negative charge there is a change in the voltage or change in a potential okay potential change will be there potential change what is that potential change will be there that is built in potential or built in potential barrier bi means built in why we are saying built in means we are not uh, uh, creating by externally because of this diffusion process charges are inducing at the interface 
because of the induced charges negative and positive there is a internal electric field and internal potential is forming internal potential is forming that one that potential or voltage potential or you can say voltage these are same thing okay these potential we are calling built in potential or built in voltage itself it is building uh, building a potential is building up there we are not creating just because of charges are moving one region to other region that's why we are getting internal electric field and internal potential in the at the interface okay this is simply pn junction diode okay now so what is the direction of electric field at the interface what is the direction which uh, from minus to plus or plus to minus what is the direction what is the suppose here built in potential and built in uh, electric field is developing okay the direction of electric field is what which direction negative to positive or positive to negative what is the electric field direction voltage is a scalar okay electric field is a vector right that's why it is having direction and magnitude but potential it is a vector or scalar what is the electric field direction man this is very basic minus to plus tirupati vishwanath the minus to plus minus to plus tirupati Plus to minus, not a minus. Uh, so always uh, electric field direction is plus to minus. Suppose if we plus, plus charge is there, so electric field lines always goes from plus to minus. This is the electric field lines always move from plus to minus. This is a common uh, uh, basic uh, funda. This is a basic funda always. electric field lines pass from plus charge to minus charge okay no problem if you don't know also no problem it's a uh, it's okay. uh, no need to worry okay so always here also in the space charge region we are getting plus charge here and minus charge here so that means always in the space charge region electric field direction is this one okay electric field this is internal electric field direction right so always plus to minus okay this is the without any external bias we are not applied any bias because why we are, we got this uh, internal electric field and you know because carrier concentration is high density of holes is higher right so only this is space charge region once this electric field is forming suppose there is a other electrons also suppose here one electron is there so here electric field internal electric field is formed this electric field will do one more job here electric field direction is this one okay that means this electrons also drift deplete from the space charge region this electric field what this will do whatever holes here this will immediately push towards the other region deplete from the other region that means in this region remaining once electric field is formed in the space charge region or after forming electric field in the space charge region this electric field swept the remaining electrons and holes within the space charge region so finally in this space charge region we will have only very 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 less free holes and free electrons it will not depleted deplete means what meaning what is the meaning of deplete deplete what is the meaning of deplete so deplete means it swifting out sweeping out sweeping out sweeping or you can say sweeping this you know sweeping means it will sweeping the all charge carriers charge carriers deplete means there is no other charge carriers are you can say sweeping the free holes and free electrons after forming electric field in the space charge region this electric field 
this electric field what is this doing remaining electrons in the space charge region remaining holes in the space charge region it is drifting it will be drifting off or you can say sweeping to other sides it will so that's why this region we are calling a depletion region this region space charge region or you can say depletion region Dep depletion region depletion region so why we are calling this depletion region once electric field is forming in this particular region up to this region this electric field pushing the electrons and holes to other region so, so this is pushing holes towards the end region and electrons towards the this region that's why depleting the charge carriers are sweeping the charge carriers that's why this region we are calling depletion region here only we will have ionized charge density that is minus charge and positive charge this charge mainly due to acceptor atoms and donor atoms only okay and acceptor donor atoms only this is not a this is not due to free electrons and free holes this charge density is immobile this will not free okay it will not move anywhere it is fixed in a crystal lattice okay that is the space charge region and depletion region. okay anyway uh, we'll discuss also this one because uh, if you understand this uh, concept pn junction concept it is very very easy leds next topic next topic in uh, gina diode also coming unit third unit that is you can easily understand you can without reading also you can write the question answer okay that's why i am uh, i will spend more time here so if you have any doubt also please ask okay don't uh, sit uh, simply okay that is not useful for you and not useful for me also if you don't get subject that is not good for you and that is not good for me because uh, what I am teaching, I also not that is also not useful. What you are listening, that is also not useful. That is the thing. so okay then. Uh